Well, guys, you did it. You gave me enough likes to where I'm going to have to compare the three optics for the concealed carry guns for you guys. So on deck today, we are going to be looking at the Sig Sauer Romeo Zero in 6 MOA, the Hollow Sun 507K uh, with 2 MOA and a 32 MOA circle, and the Swamp Fox Sentinel M. Are you ready? Stand by. It's gonna be a quick video today, guys. We're not even gonna show any full guns. These are just kind of gun pieces floating around in my hands. Because of these new skinny red dots, they're very popular in the kind of compact concealed carry type market. I've got experience with all three of these sites. If you wanna actually see the sites in use, you can check out the videos I've already done on the guns. Uh, the first would be the Sig Sauer P365XL Romeo Zero, the Canik TP9 Elite SC video, uh, the Swamp Fox Sentinel M review video and the Hollow Sun 507K video. So kind of jumping right in, what is a red dot if not uh, an aiming device? We're gonna start with kind of the dot quality and the kind of glass clarity. So the Sig Romeo Zero is a six MOA dot on a polymer lens. But that all said, the image through the lens, the clarity is excellent, the dot Roundness is really, really good, and it's 6 MOA, which is the best size dot for a pistol-mounted optic. You heard that right. It's not very good. It's the best. Deal with it. Meanwhile, the Swamp Fox Sentinel M has the biggest window in the segment. It has a 3 MOA dot that gets very, very bright. It is manually adjustable, and the actual clarity of the glass is quite good. There's no distortion around the edges or anything like that. And similar story with the Hollow Sun. Uh, it's got the two MOA dots, so it is appreciably smaller than the other two dots. Uh, the window is a little bit small. It's roughly the same size as the Romeo Zero. The windows are very similarly sized. So if you were to rate them based on my preference as far as the glass and dot are concerned, the Romeo Zero would be number one because 6MOA is the best dot. Number two would be the Swamp Fox because the glass is a little bit bigger. This is like shooting a much larger dot. I mean, it's not a whole lot bigger than the, any of the other two, but the extra glass does make it a little bit easier to keep track of where the dot's moving. And finally, the Hollow Sun, because the two MOA with 32 reticle is stupid, it's just a dumb reticle. Uh, I wish they just had their 407K, which is their six MOA. I wish it wasn't unobtainium because I'd have one of those. But the 507K is a two MOA dot works fine. Moving into the dot adjustment, uh, the Sig Sauer Romeo Zero has one button up under the hood right in front of the lens. So you, my finger makes contact with the back of the lens when I want to increase brightness. And kind of like the Delta Point Pro, there's only one direction up, then it cycles back down through the settings. There's not like an up button and a down button. You just have that one button and you get to get a smudge on the back of your lens when you adjust it. Not my favorite way to adjust a dot. Meanwhile, the Swamp Fox has two very large Trigicon-like buttons on either side of the optic. Uh, they are fantastic. They're huge, very easy to get a hold of. I'm a big fan of how this dot adjusts up and down. And Hollow Sun similarly just has two buttons on one side of the pistol. It's okay. The buttons are a little bit small, but it's not that big a deal to get them adjusted. So rating the dots based on the dot adjustability, Swamp Fox is number one by a huge margin, followed by the Hollow Sun in the number two position. And in third place by miles is the Sig Sauer Romeo Zero. You might have noticed that this dot is not mounted on a slide. That's why. Next is gonna come down to dot adjustment. Once you have the dot on the slide, you have to zero it. Uh, the Romeo Zero requires 10 inch pounds of torque, so you're gonna need to use a torque wrench on installing this. Because the housing is all plastic, you can over torque it and damage the housing. So please, if you don't own a Wheeler Fat Wrench, just check out the description. You owe it to yourself to own a Wheeler Fat Wrench. You need one if you're gonna play the Red Dot game. Next is the Swamp Fox, and the Swamp Fox uh, takes a adjustment from a very fine screwdriver tip, like a jeweler's tip screwdriver. Not my favorite. It doesn't provide any tactile clicks to let you know that you've dialed it in, so you have a very fine bladed screwdriver that you have to watch very closely with these very fine hash marks as you try to adjust it. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it works. It holds zero like a champion. Um, there's a lot of dots that are set up this way and it just kind of is what it is. And meanwhile, the Hollow Sun has super positive clicks when the adjustments are made, making it very easy to feel when you have made an adjustment. So when you're dialing in your dot, it's very quick and easy to get it adjusted. 
And did I mention to you that when the dot is torqued down on the Romeo Zero, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a guess as to getting it turned. Like the screws kind of bind a little bit, so it'll like smooth, 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 and then it'll jump like a quarter turn. Adjusting and zeroing the Romeo Zero is frustrating. Not my favorite. Not my favorite at all. So ordering the sights based around the adjustment of the dot. Hollow Sun, oh yeah, by a wide margin. Uh, the Swamp Fox is number two, and like from the very far back of the pack is the Romeo Zero. This is terrible to zero. Talking about the optics housing themselves, the Romeo Zero, as mentioned, is a polymer housing, which means it's super duper lightweight, which is a good feature for a lightweight gun. Keeps the weight down, uh, it doesn't add a bunch of weight to the slide when it's cycling, and the heavier optics do kind of make the gun sort of buck a little bit more. So the lighter weight Romeo Zero actually does allow that to shoot a little bit nicer. However, you can you can absolutely destroy this thing. I mean, it's made out of plastic. Like, in what world would the plastic housing stand up to a more abuse than an aluminum one? That said, the Swamp Fox, while it has a lot of angles going on here, uh, the actual shroud thickness isn't the thickest. In fact, they offer the Ironsides shroud for the Sentinel, which if you're gonna carry the thing, I would probably recommend getting an iron sides for it uh, just to give your optic a better chance in case you do accidentally knock it off the safe table at the range or something like that. And finally, the Hollow Sun has a super thick cowl on it. This is the one sight that I could probably drive nails with in this segment and the sight wouldn't even notice. Uh, I did not Aaron Cowan the thing and punch fence posts, but just based around the materials and geometry of the shrouds, this one looks like I almost dropped this on concrete for you guys, almost, but since it's a carry sight, I didn't do it. Uh, it's worth noting that the SIG does have a rear sight milled into the back of it, as does the Hollow Sun. Both will work with the P365s. Uh, they do provide a good co-witness uh, sight picture should the dot fail. Uh, the Sentinel M does not have the rear sight milled in. So on the Canic, the Sentinel M is an excellent sight because the sights do co-witness with the iron sights. So that's why it lives on this pistol. You may have noticed that the six slide doesn't have a rear sight with this uh, optic mounted. So it has the hollow sun mounted and that's probably a good choice for the SIG P365. So based on the housing construction, I, I mean, number one is the hollow sun. Hands down, the thing is built like a tank. Number two is going to go to the Swamp Fox there, and number three is going to be the Romeo Zero. As far as batteries and battery replacement is concerned, the Romeo Zero has its battery on the bottom, which means you'll have to unmount the sight and put your CR1632 battery in, and then remount it up and re-zero your gun. Not that big a deal. It has a pretty good battery life due to its shake-awake technology. Similarly, the Swamp Fox Sentinel M has a battery mount on the bottom side of the gun, but it takes a CR2032 battery, which has significantly more battery life than the 1632 batteries in both the Hollow Sun and the SIG. And the SIG is the only one to have a battery drawer that pulls out the side, so you don't have to lose zero when you change batteries. The 507K doesn't have the solar panel that its bigger brother sites do, and it still boasts a pretty phenomenal battery life as well. And it's also worth mentioning on the state SIG that there's like this little like clear sticker that holds the battery in place. And if you replace the battery, I'm guessing, I haven't removed it to see, but I'm guessing you have to get another one of these little clear stickers. I su suspect that you can't reuse that same sticker. So believe it or not, I'm actually gonna give the category for the battery maintenance to the Swamp Fox because it uses the 2032 battery. It is gonna be longer lasting. Uh, then the 1632 uh, Hollow Sun obviously comes in number two, the battery drawer. I realize a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, why not, it's easier to change. Fair enough, um, I just like the 2032 batteries for commonality amongst all my other optics, so I don't have to carry two different types of batteries in my range bag. But the Hollow Sun is very easy to stay on top of changing. And in a far distant third is the Romeo Zero with its stupid little sticker on the bottom. So we've come to that moment of the drama. Which optic is he gonna pick as his favorite optic? Golly, I wonder. But first, we have to talk about the sacred relationship of content creator and you, the subscriber who likes all my videos. Look at all the other people who have liked my video. Don't you wanna be like them? So I make world-class firearms content. You watch this content and you consider your child's pet hamster and getting a custom hamster ball ordered. You get my logo put onto the hamster ball, which while is really amusing and everybody who comes to the house will know the world-class firearms content here on the channel, the hamster can't really see its way around it, so it'd be really funny when running into the wall and stuff. 
That said, if you like videos like this, please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon, where just $1 a month gets you access to my Patreon with three to five posts per week. Similarly, there's a link in the description to join Big Daddy Unlimited, which if you're watching gun videos on the internet, you probably would benefit from a membership at Big Daddy Unlimited. It is a buyer's club for Second Amendment stuff. So with just $1, get you your first month and you'll get access to the best prices on the internet. And being somebody watching gun videos, that's probably something you'd be interested in. Uh, best thing you can do, guys, is just like the video. Just bang on that like button, guys. It doesn't cost you anything and I sure appreciate it. So that said, despite my love affair for the 6MOA dot of the SIG, it, it lives in a drawer. It's uh, I, I can't even keep the box the SIG comes in because it comes in a stupid stupid blister pack. So you spend $200 on a blister pack for a plastic site. It's just, it's not my favorite. But that said, the Hollow Sun is probably gonna be my favorite. It has the rear sight built into it. While I don't love the 1632 battery, it's easy enough to swap. The dot clarity is quite good. It gets very bright. It's got that 32 MOA circle, which, uh, isn't super useful, but I guess it's there as an option. Value, right? But the Swamp Fox, honestly, is a really solid sight. I really do like the Swamp Fox. I carried this on my P365 XL for quite a while, and I really like the sight. It gets plenty bright. There's not really a loser between these two sights. Like both of these are good sights. I, I feel a little bit better about the Hollow Sun Shroud uh, and not cracking the glass of the optics. So. Uh, that's why this isn't on my carry gun. And that's the only reason why that this isn't living on my carry gun is basically the rear sight of the hollow sun is a nice feature. And I think I could drive nails with this thing. Like this would make a pretty good hammer. So that all said, I'm curious which of the sites you would pick. Are there any other micro sites like the RMRCC, which costs all the money that you would consider carrying on your micro nine? What have I left out that you think should be on there? And if you've made it this far, I'm linking you to my 507K video and my P365XL Romeo Zero video, which you can check out. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, guys.